Okay, so let's talk about capturing uh, good topography. Now, every topographer is different. We want to end up with a nice full capture with the patient's eyes wide open with a good quality tear foam because it's the tear foam that the, we capture in the topographer. It's not the actual cornea. And uh, there's various ways to improve this with each topographer. You, if you're sharing a, t a chin rest between your topographer and your slit lamp, if you can try and make sure that the chin rest it doesn't have a cup that holds the chin. It makes it a lot easier to get your patient to tip your head forward or bring your chin forward through to tip their head back so you can help get the lower lid out of the way or the top lid uh, out of the way. Make sure that the patient's at a comfortable height so that they can get their head forward or back in the chin rest, they're not straining. And uh, if, if you're particularly with kids, sometimes you want to get the kids to stand at the topographer in the chin rest rather than sitting down or on a booster seat where they tend to be a little bit too short all the time. So just make sure your patient's really comfortable and able to move around. Then what you're going to do is instruct the patient with a chin and a hand rest, probably turn their head slightly to, to one side so that the eye they're presenting to the topographer is, um, is, is, is more available to the placido image. Ask them to both eyes wide open. You can see if the patient's got one eye shut to try and concentrate on where they're looking, it tends to close the eye that we're trying to capture. So you want to turn your head, both eyes wide open, take a few blinks and then try and capture the topography. Patients will stare in between doing their eyes, so you want to make sure that they've, uh, uh, they're have they blinking regularly in between and just before you do a capture so you're not capturing a lot of dryness. It's good to do multiple captures, especially for a baseline topography, do multiple captures for each eye. So do right, left, right, left with blinking in between. Once you've got your capture, let's have a look at uh, a few images here. Let's take the colour image off this one and look at the placido image first of all. So you can see this first one and the second one, it's the same patient, just a few seconds apart. And we can see there is a difference between the, the two images at the top. So this image, there's interference coming from the top lid, casting a shadow and you see the, the eyelashes are going to mean we're going to lose good data at the top. So this is a good quality map where the eyelids are out of the way. And, and this is possible with this patient. Again, this patient, there's a bit of top and lower lid interference. And this is even worse for the lower end interference. So when you've got low, lower lid interference, you want to try and get the patient to pull their chin back and tip their forehead forward. And, and again, open both eyes wide. Let's take the color map on and have a look at these two. So this is the one we started at. So here we go. The top, top one has got a nice full capture. And you can see the the, this image is, is cut off at the top a little bit. This image, the lower lid is in the way and this is not uh, keratoconus, this is just tear film meniscus that's been dragged up uh, slightly. Now these two images, you can see we've <clears throat> got what we thought was a nice big capture, but we've now got a bit of interference in it. So this is when you look at the tangential plot map and you, you see it are we dealing with a good quality map and a normal cornea? So in this case, you can see we've got this blue area on the left image, which uh, um, is just, in this case, it's a dry eye, but it may be a corneal scar or an irregularity in the cornea. So again, if you've got multiple captures for the eye, you would know that it's just a, an irregularity with one map. And on this image on the right hand side, you can see that we've got a tear film meniscus at the bottom, which is actually looking quite and if it could look quite sinister to your patient, they might think there's something wrong with their eye. But again, a bit of dryness, a bit of mucus in there, it's just been caught. So get them to blink, and you can't even use a wetting drop. And what, what you want to uh, end up with is nice full images, and end up with three images for each eye for your patient, so that you've got a good starting point for a baseline, especially for ortho -key. So I hope you found this video useful. Check out our other videos, including the other ones in this series on topography.